The WannaCry virus hasn't just set off a global pandemic, it's also pit corporate tech giants against the U.S. government. The hackers used a tool built by the government to terrorize more than 200,000 Microsoft users. And the even bigger problem here is that this is just a harbinger of what's to come. In the case of WannaCry, they targeted the same vulnerability first discovered and exploited by the NSA as an offensive cyber weapon, a weapon that was eventually stolen and then hijacked. But it's not just the U.S. that's doing this. Governments around the world are finding these crypto backdoors, stockpiling them together, and groups like WikiLeaks and the Shadow Brokers are leaking these cyber weapons for free. As governments all over the world invest in weaknesses, finding weaknesses in computer systems, we're going to continue to see organizations exploiting these. In this case, these weaknesses were made public, which is why this, is, this has really happened. We've not seen these publication of these exploits being used in this way before, and I suspect we'll see many more of those to come. This wave of imminent cybercrime he's talking about has a lot to do with the WikiLeaks release in March. The group dropped 8,761 documents and files outlining the CIA's hacking toolkit, specifically designed to exploit flaws in Apple, Samsung, and Microsoft. And as more and more of these security exploits are thrown into the public domain, it's becoming easier to buy toolkits online. These kits are easy to run. You don't even really need to have that much technical know-how anymore to become a hacker. And this is a big part of why tech companies are so enraged. Microsoft came out strongly against the U.S. government, warning about continued surveillance practices like this. Microsoft President Brad Smith wrote, This attack provides yet another example of why the stockpiling of vulnerabilities by governments is such a problem. We've seen vulnerabilities stored by the CIA show up on WikiLeaks, and now this vulnerability stolen from the NSA has affected customers around the world. Repeatedly, exploits in the hands of governments have leaked into the public domain and caused widespread damage. This international attack is pretty much exactly why Apple refused to help the FBI hack the iPhone of one of the San Bernardino terrorists. The government wanted the Cupertino-based company to build a backdoor for its iOS software. CEO Tim Cook called it the software equivalent of cancer. While that analogy may be extreme, one thing's for sure, the global reach of the WannaCry virus has raised the stakes in the debate over the role of government in cybersecurity. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.